Arthur Henry, Mrs. Tutting, I shall not take offence. Give me a cigarette. Call me Arthur Henry. Strut, strut. Always strut. Arthur Henry. Never. No. It's a little ciggy. Give me a ciggy. What will you do for it? Pay you. How much? Ten shillings. It's pence, dear, pence. Don't call me dear. Don't ever call me dear. Dear, dear, dear. Tomorrow you'll be whipped. That's as may be. But today, I'm a very good boy and shall be rewarded. Not by me. Not even for a heavenly puff, a long, deep drag. Not even. Toffee nose bitch. Get out. Bring me a cigarette tomorrow after you've been whipped. Here. Don't say I'll never give you anything, you old tart. Little Miss Wiggerskew. You'd do anything for a ciggy, won't you, dear? No. I will not. I will not drop my standards. I will not let the side down. Ever. <laughs> They used a scarf called a ramal, tucked away out of sight until that victim was relaxed. Happy, eating, singing. and broke his neck, one tug and a jerk. Quite adroitly done. <laughs> Used to dig grave, perhaps, eh? Uh, I, I don't know what he's saying, all of it. Perhaps just some kind of... Um, Ritual symbol. Anyway. He's an outdoor man, if he's anything. He's quite a strong man. What do you need a strong man for? Oh, such as moving furniture. There's a great deal of furniture moved in this house. It isn't always necessary to move the furniture, but when it is, I'm unable to do it. That's why I ask Strap to help. Oh. Why? There is nobody else. There should be. There would be. Had you not murdered your husband? Yes, Mum. Is that all you have to say? I'd rather not say anything. I'm about to be very busy. I heard you playing the piano. That's not being busy. No. No, Mother. You pretend. You lie. Keep things from me. Isn't it a lovely day? The day has nothing to do with you, child. Don't try and take the credit for it. We have so few good days, we ought to make the most of them. How? Crippled legs. How am I supposed to make the most of them? The sun travels up the bed. It must be warm and pleasant. I feel nothing. 
Nevertheless, it is a lovely day. Where are you going? To my room. If you want me, ring your bell. Will you hear? I expect so. I usually do. Don't pretend you care. I care. I love you. You don't care whether I live or die. I do. I shall be desolate when you die. Leave them there. All right. Thank you. Be careful. Oh, go away. What's this one like? You saw him. What did you get? A thousand pounds. And some other things. A pen knife and a watch. What would you like? A pen knife. I never thought you would. Here. Oh, it's a fisherman's. I don't know if he was one or not. It isn't in his list of hobbies, which were music, theatre and meeting people. People don't carry pen knives anymore. It used to be the done thing. Everyone did at one time. Oh, don't want a watch. No, it's a boy's watch. Cheap. Perhaps given to him when he was a boy, worn ever since. Perhaps by someone who wanted to show him affection, that sort of thing. Perhaps parents. But I don't think he lied about that. Why should he? Most young men want you to meet their parents if they have them, don't they? I don't know. Why? They're proud of the girl they're going to marry. The girl they're going to marry. Don't be insolent. Well, I know nothing of girls and young men. I knew nothing of women till I was 30. Get out. Early on, unusual. I don't know why I implore you. I'm an excellent gardener. <laughs> You're nothing of the sort. I don't think you could dismiss me now. The garden would suffer. Only I know what's in it. You find things popping up without warning all over the place. <laughs> I know everything in my garden. I know all the ground selected. Get out. Get out! Get out! How dare you! Right. How dare you refuse! Look at those filthy people! Oh, Get out! I'm Get going! Out. I'm going! Get out! Is it all over now? Yes, it is. Until the next time. There won't be a next time. There will. There always is. You are a slave to your passions, my girl. I don't understand it. I only slept with your father once. The result was you, and I am grateful to him for that. It was wonderful to have it all over at one blow. There was never any need to pursue the issue. I was so lucky. I never needed to see him again. Of course I did, day after dreary day, whinings and pleadings. He can't really have wanted more of the same thing, more taking Piggy to market. For weeks he asked me to let him take Piggy to market again. 
I refused. I said, no, not likely. Porks off. Porks off. And then he stopped. And then he went. I doubt it was really remembered by anybody. Certainly isn't by me. Or you, for you never knew him. I'm grateful for his money. Well, little enough of that, and all to you. Why not? And he never really loved you. How could he? He didn't know you. No, it was all to spite me. But he didn't spite me, did he? And when I die, you'll have more money. I would give it to you now, but I prefer to see you work for it. I don't want you to die, Mother. I know. Isn't it curious? Goodness knows what you'll get up to when I do. I would have liked to die in India. Simply to give the birds something to peck at. I always think that is the most useful thing one can do with one's body. Give it to the animal. Oh. I have up, but that stupid doctor says it's not possible in England for very good reasons. He means public outrage. I am not convinced. Oh, bury me then. At least the worms will have a feast. Absorbs. Oh, Mother. Mother. Don't talk about such things. I don't want you to talk about such things. I want to talk about it being warm enough to take you outside, sit you under apple trees, have you smell the honeysuckle, listen to the bees. I shan't last until then, unless I am fed. You haven't given me so much as a crust all day. Not that I care. I don't care about food. But I do need it. I'll get you something. Thank you. I would rather like fish fingers, if that could be arranged. Of course. Everything will be back to normal now. See, it is. I don't normally wear white, but uh, it seemed a day for white. You're very nice. I like white. I would wear white if I could, but how silly I would look. I'm afraid it has to be dark gray, but all white with a shocking pink tie. That would be my choice, but impossible. Women are luckier in that respect. They may wear whatever pleases them, always supposing they have the money to buy things, but even then, anything can be draped. I'm thinking of gone with the wind. I don't take sugar. I ought not to, and I don't. Generally, I find that to be a, a good rule, not one always to be kept. Thank you. Your letters have been marvelous. I feel you know me very well. I have enjoyed telling you everything. The last few months have been exciting, great fun. I would not have thought it possible to fall in love by correspondence, but there you are. The first thing I said when I came through the door, <laughs> rehearsed all the way from Thamesmead. But though I was determined, you know, to, to say it, when I did say it, it felt the most natural thing to say. I would have said it at once, even if I hadn't rehearsed it. Doesn't seem very much more to say. I have been desperate for a cup of tea. I don't drink, will you know that, apart from the odd bottle of wine when I have something to celebrate, but everybody does that. It usually lasts the week, the bottle, unless it's become two. You have a mother. I'm sure I'm going to like her. I expect she's a good sort. I expect she makes people feel at home. And now it's cold. Yes, isn't it? Mm. Drink it out. I'd rather not. Will you pour me some more? No, I was desperate for a cup of tea. Thank you. My fault. Talking so much. But I had to tell you how. Why. I mean, it must have seemed quite ridiculous to you to have a complete stranger standing at the door and saying what he said. No, no. Not ridiculous. When did you know? I... I knew for sure. After your third letter, page D. 3D. That's right. What was it I said? You said... Thank you. 
You said you ached for the minute detail of day-to-day -day existing to become important through sharing. So do I. You know, nobody in the world cares that I can't leave my flat without going around all the cushions. Nobody knows. I'm sure you have similar things you do yourself. Well, I, I, I know you do. Uh, have you kept all the letters? Yes, you asked me to. Have you got them? Yes, I've brought everything. I would like to keep them forever. We will. It'd be a shame not to. I would like the letters and the money. Yes, of course. I would like them now. Oh. I hope I don't offend you. I hope I explained in my letters that uh, though I expected to find a lover and husband one day, I also needed to overcome my timidity to protect myself, to properly allay my apprehensions. I want to be sure, Jeremy. You must want to be sure. Oh, I am sure from the moment I saw you. I admit, had a hag opened the door, had a... The dreadful thing to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, please. No, even though you had rehearsed, I'm sure that if you'd not found me reasonably attractive, More than you would that. have found something else to say. More than reasonably attractive, you're beautiful. Oh, how nice of you to say so. <laughs> I would have made my excuses and left you, I mean, isn't that what they say? Who? If you had been a shock. Oh, that's fine then. Glorious. It isn't the money as money. It's money as guarantee of your good intentions. I know. I do understand. How much? Well, I thought £4,000 might be enough. It isn't a question of the amount. No. No, but you know. No. Cash? Yes. How did you get it? It's mine. I mean, you didn't go into a bank yesterday and say, give me £4,000 in cash, I hope. You asked me not to. I don't care how you got it, except that it might indicate your thrift if you saved it, your honesty if you stole it, your cleverness if you acquired it without a fuss. I did. What? I sold my new car. To whom? A dealer for cash. Where? In Gloucester. Ah, how clever. But I don't know why you would want me to be clever. I mean, why can't I just give you a cheque? You don't understand. I thought you understood. Over the weeks, months, that we've been writing to each other, I have tried to explain. I don't want anyone to know about us. Nobody does know about us. I must be sure. Please, I promise you, I am sure. No friends? I have none. No relatives? Well, you know I have none. Are you telling the truth? Well, you know I am. Yes. Yes, I think you are. What about your flat, the people who live near you, your neighbours? Thames made a box. Are you sure? Is there no one who will care whether you live or die? There is no one. I, why should there be? And I am not alone. It is the most elusive thing, you know. You know, friendship. You know, love. To find anyone who would care, who would notice if you were gone, still there, or gone. A nod on the tube, the face familiar, but back to the paper. Another in reception, two or three more on the third floor, which is vast, desk on desk, stretching. Oh, I don't mind. None I like to do what I do. It comes in from the right and goes out on the left, and I scan and correct and question. And do you know, sometimes it's just a jump, a jerk in the pattern, but never does a mistake escape me. I'm told it's like the way a soldier quarters the landscape, the way he observes by letting his mind take in the patterns and registers them, and then, alerted by the merest, subtlest change of tone and form, and bang. You know? My father was a soldier. Well, now a real soldier would be noticed, gone. They are. We noticed. Mother celebrated. I was only a child, tiny at the time, but um, I remember the celebration. The truest love exists when the world does not care, but one person does. And usually that is the only love, because in spite of what the world says, they don't care whether we live or die, do they? I don't know. I don't think so. Heroes and sparrows! I beg your pardon? I used to think that lots of people would care 
that all the crowds who came to a death were there because it was important. A person gone, life flown, and it was noticed, but it isn't noticed. Quite often nobody knows at all or cares, unless they're in at it. Who would say you were a missing person to anyone, were you one? Officially. Hmm. I suppose the Inland Revenue. They've got an awful lot to do. Haven't they? Could I have the money now? Well, yes, of course. Am I acceptable? From the moment you walked through the door, Jeremy. Margaret. Hate magic. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Nobody calls me anything but Jeremy. Well, actually, it's it's Semper most of the time, Mr. Semper. How long do you think, if, if I'm absolutely acceptable? Hmm? Oh, at once. Why? Well, I shall need to buy some things. Uh, a clean shirt, a, a suit, everything. We'll buy them together. I'll enjoy that. Are you quite sure everything's here? Yes. You're out of order. I should have thought you were a very orderly man, Jeremy. Oh, dear. Doesn't matter. You'll have me, then. You've made me very happy. Are, why don't we slip into something more comfortable? Oh, yes. To the left, an owl. It's all right. To the right, fire. What's he like? Get out. Come back in an hour. It was simple. I like simple food. Yes. We won't eat like this all the time. No. This is a special occasion. Yes. You still hungry? I'm so used to cooking for myself. No, not cooking. Heating. Heating for myself. This has come down to heating and eating for and by myself. Television, of course, all the time for the three minutes it takes. I can do it in a commercial, what I eat. I see you don't have it, or rather, I assume you don't have it. Bad reception? We don't have it. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe that you've accepted me. Not quite. That we are we. Not quite, quite believe. Oh, nice. <laughs> I dig into it all, think about myself, wonder what it is makes me acceptable. I think I'm a kind man. One gets a few opportunities to be kind living alone. One can hardly be kind to oneself, I suppose. And I've never been bold enough to go out into the world and find people to be kind to, though my heart bleeds for them, the, the ones on television. And what I ordered in a police state, as it were, conscripted and sent out, I would be firm but kind. I would have been respected in places like India. Hmm firm but kind. But most of all, and this is a quality appreciated the world over, the books would balance. You know, they would. That's it, isn't it? 
That's why you want me. This place, the ground, the land, the house, you are money, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, apart from the companionship I can offer, you offer, and am offered by you. <laughs> I can't remember ever feeling so happy in my life. <laughs> I will have some more lamb. Not quite so underdone. The bits round the bone at the end, I love. Please, let me. I can't have you waiting on me. Let me carve. <laughs> I never get the chance to carve a really good-sized piece of meat. What will you, we, do with the rest of it? I suppose your mother will eat some and, and some coal tomorrow, but no more than that. It does begin to taste odd after a day or so, doesn't it? Can I help you to some more? No, thank you. Oh, please. You've had so little. <laughs> You'll make me feel like a pig. <laughs> Yes, why not? It is rather good, isn't it? Is it local? Cotswold lamb? Local why farmer? Why not? And then we'll sit by the fire and talk about each other. Not that there's anything else I need to know about you, but it will be pleasant. We'll drink something and sit by the fire. And why don't we get into something more comfortable? Oh, the cliches. They all work, don't they? <laughs> When one finally finds love, they all get trotted out. Middle-aged lady of good family with some wealth wishes to correspond with a single gentleman with a view to eventual marriage. A long and exhaustive investigation by correspondence must be expected before eventual meeting. Serious persons need not fear that their application will not be given careful consideration in the strictest confidence. Box 239. To whom it may concern, it is not easy for me to bring myself to write to you. By this I mean that I am not the sort of person who normally finds himself answering advertisements. My name is Austin Tupp and I am 45. As far as I can tell, never having had need to consult a doctor, I am in good health. It occurs to Thank me you for your letter to number more. 12. And I'm prepared to see it. Truth to tell, doctors and the like terrify me. I am glad to know that you will not require evidence of my sprightliness before our meeting. Hello? Hello? I rang the bell, there was no one there. Hello? 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 Is there anybody there? There's somebody ringing the front doorbell. There's somebody calling hello. There's somebody ringing the front door bell. Hello. Does it mean what? I am expected. Not by me, well, not. Put not a foot into this bedroom. This room is inviolate. Do you know what that means? Yes. Well, don't bloody do it, then. Is that too much to ask? Are you unwell? Often. Would you please leave now? You aren't by any chance, Mrs. Tutting. I am by every foul chance, just she. Though it isn't the name I object to. It's how I got it. Perfectly good name. But it isn't me you want. It's my whore of a daughter. Thank you. You won't. I have. That's as may be. Is she at home? Not a foot. Not a toe. Oh, goodness me, a bloody humorist. <laughs> goodness me. Am I, by any chance, looking at Mr. Wright? Tup. Austin Tup. That will have to be said a few more times before I remember it. Tup. Austin Tup. I haven't forgotten it yet, you fool. But it will have to be said a few more times. The brain rarely takes on pointless tasks. Is that your experience? The brain does as it's told. Mine doesn't, Mr. Tup. There you are, you see, you remembered. That's as maybe. Am I pretty? 
No. I was once. I doubt it. Striking, perhaps, but never pretty. I'll strike you, my lad. Not from where I'm standing. Not a foot. Um, who are you? What are you doing here? Uh, ah. I am Austin Tupp. How do you do? I thought I was expected. No. Oh. Not yet. Not until tomorrow. Well, take him away if he's nothing to do with me. How dare you come into the house? I called and rang the bell. Please, come down. We were talking. You've upset my mother. Oh, oh, no. I wasn't enjoying talking to him, but we were talking, so your interruption qualifies as rudeness, and I'm not surprised. My daughter is rude, Mr. Top. You've remembered. <laughs> what? What? You've stopped. A mental note. I'm a bit of a do-it-myself man. I am not upset by rudeness. I rise above it. Top. Top. Top, top, top. Your mother said she would not remember my name. Why should she? I've remembered hers. My suitcases are at the door. My worldly goods. Yes. Where shall I put them? I don't know. Then they'll come to no harm here. None. Is the room still occupied? What? Like a hotel until noon. I don't know what you're talking about. You asked me to come. You said you had decided that the time was right for us to meet. Tomorrow. Look at me. Would you look different tomorrow? I should be prepared. You ought to find somebody by now. I beg your pardon? What is it? Are you serious in your intentions? This has all been attended to by correspondence. I have asked you here so that we might, um, so that I can be sure. We? We? Yes, of course, but most of all so that I can be sure, after all. It, after all, um... Will you marry me? You have lied to me in your letters, Mr. Tuck. In which particular? In as far as I remember, the particular lie that you are shy and unable to put yourself forward in company, which is the reason for your lack of success in life. I found that charmingly frank. It isn't altogether untrue. You are hardly shy. I am, often. But not when I'm intrigued by something. Then I don't care much for anything but finding out, understanding, straightening. Smoothing the wrinkles from the paper. I hope you do like music. Why? Music, drama, and meeting people. Oh, is that what it says? Was that another lie? No, no. I like everything. That was suggested by the computer. It is apparently the most usual thing. Or rather, a combination of things. Interests. You're not suitable. Oh. Please go. I have nowhere to go. Why am I not suitable? Because I've composed my letter by computer. It's only like writing letters on a typewriter. It sh should be in your own words. They are. But why? So that I can judge your character. Why? You're odd. Couldn't you see that from my handwriting? No. No, no, your handwriting is neat, gentle, sensitive. How do you know I am not that? You are obviously not. Deep down I am. Will you marry me? I don't allow that question to be asked. But I thought that to be the whole point of the exercise. I have burned my boats. Confident of acceptance and in accord with your instructions, I have shut up shop in my digs, brought my baggage, cancelled the papers, that sort of thing, milk, taken off, given notice, left the firm in the lurch. Though, I am the firm, as you know. There's nothing but me and my brain. That's the firm my skill, and, and come here, intention, marriage, serious intention. You always say serious, don't you? 
uh, the wording of the advertisement may change slightly. Sometimes you're a widow, sometimes you're not, but always you are serious. Only serious persons need apply. Here I am, deadly serious, applying. And in my opinion, you could not get a better applicant to apply. I, I thought it was all cut and dried. Here are your letters, and here is 320 pounds. Is it not enough? It isn't a question of the amount. I am very interested in the applicants who do not measure up. Why? I ran you through my computer. You are very choosy. It is an important decision. One of the most important. Have you ever made a mistake? Yes. Often? I've only been married once. Like your mother. I too. Another lie. My marriage would have disqualified me, according to the computer. I feel I have paid my debt to society. Twelve years with remission. That's why I'm so good with computers. I came out with a purpose at a mental age of 15. Arrested development, ideal for computers. Well, truth to tell, a little over the hill, but then I'm not a high flyer. Tell you anything, do anything. Wonderful thing is computers. Computers can do anything. Complete satisfaction guaranteed. You only need to put up one advertisement against another. Set one over the other and ask for light. It comes. Words and phrases the same. Ideas even. Over the years, every newspaper. The name caught my interest. Something read somewhere. And there it was. Drawn in. Your mother, of course. Wonderful feeling as the word slot. Do anything. You can't copulate with them, however. They're sexual, of course. That's why adolescents and cons and monks love them. But they're suck machines. We understand, Mrs. Tuttle. Then? There was a struggle. And. The axe dropped on my husband's head. It was dropped. It was horrible. Thank you, Mrs. Tuttle. Don't get out, Strap. They won't hear you ringing that. They won't hear. I am aware that they won't. She stopped. Into the garden. That's all right, Strap. Nothing to do with you. You are a servant. I'm not. I'm a colleague. A digger. You're simply a digger. Have you been told to dig? I'm more than that. I have a degree. Digging. <laughs> I'm a digger because that is the best way that I can use my talents. I'm designated a digger. And you'll never be anything else. Strap. I know. I have a brain, but I'm not dexterous. Oh, I love her. Your daughter. I love her. <laughs> I dig deep into her. I'm a digger into her body. I do that. She is the earth. That's all. Just that. No more than you digging a hole in the earth. And what you put into the earth rots and becomes the earth. That's all. He. That one. The man who has come. Mr. Tup. The deceitful man, he is one of us, and he is dexterous, nimble, knows all the secrets, a 
very clever man. Mr. Wright. Well, I've dug a pit for him. It's in the copse. It's covered and it's hidden. Then you have done your job. Give me a ciggy. I'm going to the copse. <laughs> Mr. Wright! Mr. Wright! Mr. Wright! <laughs> oh, deep black. You do a lot of digging. I do. They become deep grained. Mr. Strap doesn't often eat with us. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, I'm not an inside man. Well, I used to be a long time ago. Yes, lecture halls and high tables and ducking into rooms. Oh, one room after another. Well, you're either an inside man or you're not. Luckily, I found out quite early in life that I was not an inside man. Uh, these are my carrots that you're eating. Uh, though they are the tracklements properly for beef, on this occasion they sit fondly with the lamb. Because of peas, uh, peas and lamb. Uh, one never ever thinks of lamb without peas or without rosemary. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I can see from the interest in your eyes, Mr. Tuck, that neither do you. You are aware of the fitness of things, design, Destiny, a spray of fern, chalk into chalk. The way that bodies fit into bodies when they're taken on the long voyage. Plank butting up to plank. A neatness of desire. Our flesh accommodates. How it flattens into the shape of the earth when it is laid upon it. Do you know that you need not uh, earth up asparagus anymore? Hmm? So, no more barrows in the garden. No more resting places for crowns or kings <laughs> without their crowns. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I should be outside peering in. Oh, well, I'm delighted to be joining you. Oh, it's a privilege. I have everything with meaning. You? I can find meanings for everything. Oh. Oh. Oh, let me help. Do it. Tonight? Yes. Yes. What about the omens? There are no omens. No, it doesn't matter. Do you know he killed his wife? It isn't the same. He probably hated her. Wait until tomorrow. No. No. I insist that it's done tonight. Oh, you insist? Even though there are no omens? The pit is dug. What are the words? I don't know. You can't wait until tomorrow. No, I'm not sure. He did kill his wife. He was convicted of it. Look, that was hate, hate. Ask him in front of me. I'll know. Oh, I may only be a digger, but... Yes, it's because you're too clumsy. You couldn't dispatch a chicken. It's a fundamental question. He is killed. How did he kill? Perhaps he had a reason for it. Did he gain by that killing? Most of all, did he hate? Now, I insist. You really shouldn't be swayed by the fact that he's killed someone. He might be a murderer. I should like to hear him say how he felt myself. He has been brought here. Yes, he has. And you brought him a traveller. Yes. What else is there to do? There isn't anything else to do. Then do it. Without omens? Yes. Or I turn informer. I haven't killed. No. You haven't. What are the words? Suppose the omens are wrong. No, there are no omens. The omens are right. They must be right, unless the omens are heard to be wrong. They must be right. No news is good news. What? The principle. No. Let those be the words. No, no. The words are not those. They are. If you won't choose them, then I shall. I shall say. I love you. Let those be the words. The words are, no news is good news. I shall not use the other words as a signal. <laughs> Say the words. <laughs> no. Are you a happy man? I? Oh, I am. I am. Does that surprise you? I have what I want. What you are given? Yes. That's wonderful. Isn't it? You? I have my ups and downs. How did you kill your wife? 
Oh, it's all right, as you told me. It's all right, I don't mind. Tell me. I strangled her. You didn't draw blood? No. Well, how did you feel when you strangled her? Love. And exhaustion. My whole body felt the keenest and most startling exhaustion. Not a contradiction. It was like being drained of blood, made keen by the sharpening of my nerves, startled by the sudden exhaustion, voiding. I have never felt better. I didn't know her well, some days, weeks. That was right. Not at all well, until I killed her. Isn't it amazing how that happened? Does it always? Oh, yes. Well. No news is good news. I love you. Sugar. Now, what does the matter with you from death stood on? <laughs> Here, on the bed he slept in, in his dirt. middle-aged lady, recently bereaved, of good family and some wealth, wishes to correspond with a serious single gentleman with a view to eventual marriage. A long and exhaustive investigation by correspondence must be expected before eventual meeting. Serious persons need not fear that their application will not be given careful consideration in the strictest confidence. 